So obviously the fact that she's declawed in front means that she was an owner cat. Someone did have her at one time at the veterinarian. So, and then we're going to, yeah, we will at the end. Um, we're going to draw a little bit of blood on her just so that we can run a feline leukemia test. And we usually will draw that out of a back leg vein. It's usually the safest way to go. A lot of these cats that come in are extremely nervous and scared, and so we try to stay away from their head. And you'll notice that, again, there has to be some restraint in this process. Um, this, is, this is a fairly delicate process um, to hit a vein and to draw that blood. Um, and personally, I, I, I think our staff is, is fantastic as far as how they do this and, and the fact that they're able to do this. Um, so in order to do this feline leukemia test, we need three drops of blood, and then we put four drops of our conjugate in there to run the test. And then we have an IDEX snap test. And this is actually a combo test. It will test for feline leukemia um, or FIV. What is feline leukemia, Gretchen? It's a, a virus that they get that affects their immune system that makes it so they can't uh, get over any type of sickness that they have. A lot of times they will, um, they can live with it for their entire life, um, but the ma majority of the time they'll get sick within a year or two of having it. And okay. um, it is not treatable. It is fatal for them. Okay, so it is a fatal disease. But Same thing with FIV. It's a progressive disease. Right. Okay. So we snap that down. That takes about 10 minutes to run. And we're just recording everything down here then too. Now if this cat had had fleas, Gretchen, what would you have done to address that? Uh, we would give it a product, give her a product called Revolution, which will treat for fleas. The nice thing about Revolution, especially for cats, is that um, it also treats for ear mites. So if she were to have ear mites, it would treat both of them. Okay. And Revolution will also um, take care of some intestinal parasites. Now, let's talk about that. Uh, how much is Revolution? What is, what is our cost for something um, for that? Well, cost-wise, it costs about uh, $6 an animal. Okay. So it's um, not cheap. And the distemper vaccination? The distemper is vaccination, I believe, is around $3 per vaccination. We're okay. going to get her picture because we always put a picture with the animal, too. This is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times they're not as cooperative as this kitty is. Um, so... That was obviously one of the easier ones. Um, I, think, I think it's important to note the cost that goes into every single animal that comes in here. This is for every single cat that comes through our door. Um, they're going to get this. This is what, you know, this is something that is just, you know, and again, if you're doing 1,200 animals, I've got two staff people. We're investing money into the vaccine, into the, um, the feline leukemia test, which let's talk about that. What's the cost on that? Feline leukemia test, actually, IDEX just raised their prices and we're paying um, almost $13 per test for a cat. Okay. So we're going to, right now, we're just going to shave her belly to see if we see a scar that she could possibly be spayed. Okay. Let me get a different clippers. Somebody wants to trim in a cat's hair. There's different size clippers that you can use, and the one that um, works the best is the one that'll cut right down to the skin. All right, and we'll show you this, um, but she, she does have what looks like a scar, and a lot of times alcohol, you can see it a little bit better. But she has got a scar that goes right along here. This is not a guarantee that this cat is spayed. This is, right. this is a guarantee that this cat has had some sort of abdominal surgery. The fact that she's declawed, chances are she probably is spayed, but we right. can't make that guarantee. Right. Um, but we do, we do mark that on the paperwork to say that that cat does have a spay scar. When the animal does get adopted, the vet can make that determination if they would like to open that animal up to make sure that she's spayed or if they'd like to wait to see if she goes into heat. Sure. And obviously, you know, no one wants to do any unnecessary surgery on an animal, so that is something that likely uh, the veterinarian would encourage the owner to wait to see if the animal goes into a heat cycle.
And, and as Gretchen said, it's highly unlikely that, um, you know, she um, is not spayed because she is front declawed, because usually that kind of goes hand in hand a lot of times. Okay, now okay. Is, is there something else that we need to do? Um, the last thing that we're going to do, she's finished um, with everything that we need to do with her, but then we will, um, we have to put this paperwork through our computer system and write her up on our update calendar to make sure that if she's still here in three weeks, we do a distemper. Ten days from now, we would do a, a second deworming on mm -hmm. her. Um, and then we'll also check our loss reports to see if there's anybody that's missing this kitty. Okay, now let's talk about the process of going up uh, for adoption. So obviously we have to hold a kitty how long? They have to be held as strays for seven days before we can put them up for adoption to give the owner a chance to claim their cat. Um, if nobody does come and claim that cat within seven days, um, then the cat would go up on the adoption floor if we feel that these, this cat is adoptable and she will wait for somebody to take her home once she's up front. Right. And you guys also do what we call a catitude test, which is a personality right. type. We will do an assessment on the cat um, just to see how tolerant they're going to be, um, how outgoing they are. We have four different grades that we will, um, or categories that we would put the cats into. Our um, highest category would be our cool cats or our cats that will pretty much be tolerant of just about anything. They can go into a mm -hmm. home with a bunch of children. They'd sure. be able to handle that no problem or other pets usually. Um, we have our cats that are called mixed bags that might take them a little bit longer to adjust, but they're usually pretty easy going cats. Uh, we have our royalty kitties or what we call our princess kitties. Those are our cats that um, kind of like attention on their own terms and they mm -hmm. are, you know, a little bit more uh, finicky about, you know, maybe wanting attention. They, they basically like to do things on their own and then we have what's called our TLC cats and those are our cats that are um, kind of shy. They're going to take shy. some time to Sensitive. warm up into a home, they're going to okay. need a quiet home um, and we want to make sure that we're going to be able to place them into that type of environment rather than into a high activity level house where they're going to Great. probably hide. Great. <laughs> okay, so um, that's kind of what we do with the kitties, and of course we're going to wait the 10 minutes, but we won't be doing this on camera, and she's going to check to make sure that the kitty is not feline leukemia positive. Right. It's got a couple more minutes to go. It's coming up with one dot on the test, meaning that the test is um, probably going to be negative, but we wait that full 10 minutes just to, so that we can read that at that point. Just one dot is going to, that's your control dot that basically says that your test is negative, that it worked. Um, if you get a dot on either side, that's going to be a positive test either for fetal leukemia or FIV. Okay, great. Thank you, Gretchen. Thanks, Renee. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that you had an exciting time learning about the journey that animals take through the Humane Society on their way uh, to their new home and hope to talk to you soon again. And until that time, happy, happy tales, tales to you. you. Happy Tales was brought to you by the Oshkosh Area Humane Society and the following local underwriters Cats Cozy Inn Poop Patrol Provident Financial Consultants, LLC.